Hey guys, how's it going? This is Average Scale Modeler 77, and today I'll be doing an inbox review on the old Revel P51D Mustang kit in 148th scale. You can pick this kit up at a Michael's craft store for about $12, like I did, if you have a 40% off coupon. And being an old Revel kit, usually the fits aren't too bad, and they're quite fun to build. I must admit, these are probably some of my favorite kits, these old Revel ones, because they're cheap and they go together relatively easily and quickly and you have a really nice finished product. So, let's go ahead and see what's on the box. Right here is the second decal option you can do. This will be the first one, the big beautiful doll. This is the Miss Marilyn 2. And right here are all the paints you can use. And on the other side, as usual, you get a nice history, as well as some specifications about this kit. Uh, 49 parts in light gray plastic. So pretty straightforward kit. I don't see why a beginner couldn't start with this. 49 parts isn't too bad. So let's get to what's in the box. As usual, you have the instructions. Typical Revel instructions. Pretty easy to follow. Nothing too, too hard. Uh, there are some options you can do, such as... Let's see if I can point this cam a little bit better. All right. You can have the... Um, gun doors open or closed on the top wing which is a really nice feature um, right here it's a part map tells you about all the parts and uh, the numbers that correspond with them some paint colors here and um, really basic interior you have the seat the joystick the instrument panel and the floor and you just install that right into the fuselage as usual with revel kits and then you just glue the fuselage to that it appears that the exhaust go into the inside of the um, fuselage before you glue the two halves together. Not sure how I feel about that. I've had good luck and bad luck with that. You can do two auxiliary fuel tanks if you so choose. I want to do something cool where I have one on and then I have the plane hung up and have the other one looks like it's just been dropped from the plane so it's kind of falling down to earth. I thought that would be a pretty cool touch with this kit. Another thing I do like about it is that the wheels come in one piece. All I have to do is glue this uh, hub right here, or the rim, or whatever you want to call it, into the wheel. So you can paint this up separately really quickly without having to worry about getting the black onto the silver right there. The only downside is that these tires are not weighted. They are circular, as you can see in the instructions. There's no weight to them at all. And I'm pretty sure you can uh, display these, uh, this landing gear open or closed, which is nice because I want to have mine in flight. Um, it does come with a figure, and I must admit the figure looks pretty nice for an old Rebel figure. Usually, usually they're kind of chubby looking and they don't have a lot of good recess detail, but this one seems to have nice detail. It looks like it'll take a wash quite nicely. And uh, the painting guide is pretty simple. The only thing I don't like is that instead of pointing to a part of the plane and then telling you in English that it'll be black or like, green or whatever, they shade the boxes different colors as the key, and then have this shade of different colors. The only problem is that sometimes you can't decipher which color is which because of how similar the colors look. But they do give you a really nice um, tip page, I guess you can say, on how to apply the checkered decal on the big beautiful doll. Like it tells you where to cut them and how to apply other decals. So pretty straightforward, pretty simple looking instructions. Nothing that I can see that's wrong with them as of now. The decals look good as well. Really nice, vibrant red colors. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but the red is quite vibrant, looks really nice. Um, one thing that I do like about this kit, I'll zoom in a little bit. There we go. Let's see if I can focus the camera as well. Close enough. So as you can see, this plane contains Japanese flags as well as Nazi flags. Um, I believe that's because he flew the pilot. This pilot flew in both theaters. I know he started in the P-40, went up to the P-38, and then eventually came over to the P-51, which is the kit that you know I'm building right now. Well, we'll be building. I'm not building it right now. But um, yeah, he flew the P-51, so I guess that's why he has Japanese and German flags on there. And they do have swastikas, guys. So that is super awesome. I like to have my swastikas, not a neo-Nazi or anything, just a modeler who wants to have a pretty historically accurate model, and I'm glad I don't have to pay for aftermarket right there. Zoom me back out to the box, so let's get into the plastic. 
As you can see, there is an exposed engine on both fuselage halves, so you can have the, it looks like the cowling off, and you have some nice detail in there. I'm not gonna do that, because uh, like I said, I want mine in flight. This looks really nice. There is no detail on here. I assume there might be another part that you slip on over it to get that detail. Um, the antenna does come, does come attached to this uh, left fuselage, so be careful not to snap that off. But it's a really nice size fuselage. Um, quite larger than uh, some other kits I've built. But something that I do like about this kit, even for it being old, is that it has really nice detail in the interior. You have, it looks like, buttons and all that stuff, levers. So really, really nice detail on the interior. And the second sprue, you have the propeller, as you can see. A fair amount of flash on here. I do find that rival kits always have a lot of flash on the propellers. Two auxiliary fuel tanks in uh, four halves. Well, quarters, I guess you can say. Um, well, no, two halves. Four pieces, two halves. Um, nice size fuel tanks, too, as well. The pilot figure looks super crisp, super nice, really impressive detail there. The instrument panel is also something that I quite that I quite like. Uh, a lot of button details, uh, recessed stuff, and uh, you can see the dials and needles and all that. It looks like there's two types of exhausts. I'm not sure why, um, but it does come with two exhausts. It looks like you have the tail wheel, some other parts on here, machine guns. Uh, not super crisp detail on the machine guns, but doesn't really much matter since it's going to be closed up anyways. The bottom half of the wings, really nice detail in here. You have the gun bay, it looks like, right here. And inside, you can see that inside the wheel wells, you have nice riveting detail and super nice, uh, looks like maybe hydraulic lines or stuff. So that looks super good. Um, it would be a shame to cover that up, but I do want it in flight, so like I said, oh well. Looks super nice though. Right here are the top halves of the wings, and not sure if the camera can pick it up, but this looks like a, some machine gun ammo. So you get some bullets in there if you want to have the door open for a ground scene, so that's really nice. And the interior cockpit floor has what looks to be wood grain, because you have a lot of nice raised effects on there. So that's pretty sweet. You have the seat, and... Uh, I don't know, I can't really tell if this is the right or left stabilizer, but this one does have that Rebel identification mark, China, you know, 1977. Uh, so you're going to have to sand that off, but no biggie. And before we go, the two clear pieces, uh, keeping it in the bag for obvious reasons, don't want to scratch it up, but if it's anything like the other kits I've built from Rebel, the clear parts are pretty good. So with that, that'll conclude the inbox review. If you like the video, leave a like, comment, subscribe, share the videos if you want, and I'll catch y'all later. Bye.